Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Home Studio Simplified Show. So glad to have you here. I see some people in the chat that have never been here before. You know what we're going to do for those individuals. That's right. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you all so much for being here. This is your first time here. This channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. And the motto is that we can dream alone. We can even create alone, but together we can achieve so much more. Speaking of togetherness, here's some awesome people that have come together to help this channel stay alive. I'll just be honest with you right now. There's more people I need to add to this list. Um, sort of a good problem to have. They're coming in faster than I can put them on. So, <laughs> wow. With that being said, um, let's also give a shout out to our sponsor who has helped to keep this channel going as well. Not necessarily monetarily, but just with all of the support and being an affiliate with this. And also, well, let's just play the video. Come on now. Today's video is sponsored in part by the Pro Mix Academy. The Pro Mix Academy offers affordable courses from mentors, world-class engineers, Grammy winners, and multi-platinum selling producers. And with the resources available on the Pro Mix Academy, you can learn how to create radio-ready mixes from the comfort of your own home studio. Most of the courses also offer multi-tracks that you can then add to your portfolio and begin to build out your business. Follow the link in the description of this video to head on over to the Pro Mix Academy today and start learning the skills that are needed to take your hobby or your business to the next level. All right, here we are again, folks. Now, I do realize that I had on the schedule, Sarah Carter was going to be on today for an interview. However, something came up on her end. Um, we had it all scheduled, ready to go. Um, but something did come up, and I completely understand that, especially in the day and age in which we live right now. Stuff just pops up on people. So no hard feelings against her or anything of that nature. She will be on momentarily. It'll be sometime here in the near future. But with that being said, Today, we're going to be diving into something else. And uh, by way of announcements, congratulations to AC Town, who won the November Song Contest. We have one of these every single month. So if you're new here and you're wondering what is this all about, there is a link included in the description of this video where you can go and sign up for that. It gives you all the details that you need to know. It even allows you to upload your song that you'd like to submit there. What we do is everyone uploads a song that they've submitted, an original piece. We then go back and listen to that, all of us together, on one of these live streams, much like this one today. I will then pick a favorite of mine, and that favorite will then receive a free mix and master from yours truly. Now, we can then choose to do that live on the stream like we're doing today, or we can actually um, just do that sort of behind the scenes if you're not necessarily wanting to have that out there for everyone to see. So, what do we got going on today here? Well, we have AC towns mix full and free and the way that he has sorted this out to me is um basically he just went through the cakewalk feature where you can export individual tracks exported all the individual tracks with the effects that he wanted to leave on and then the rest of them he left raw sent them to me like this i flew him straight into cakewalk and boom so it will happen mark i promise you she was excited to be on too so no big deal. All right. By way of announcement, also, if you were not aware of the fact, we do have still this is the last day for the Ultimate Cakewalk by Band Lab tutorial course Black Friday sale. This is featured on the Pro Mix Academy from Warren Hewitt. Uh, he graciously allowed me to host this on his platform. It's normally $97. You can get it today and today only for 35 buckaroos. That's a steal of a deal. And for those of you who have taken the course, if you're in the chat here or you're going through the course, let me know what you think of it. Let other individuals here in the chat know what you think of it. If you're interested in getting a hold of that, I will go ahead and post a link here momentarily. It's also on the channel as well. And there is a Black Friday code that you're going to need to know in order to get that um, for the discounted price. That's $65 off the original price. So if you're a Cakewalk user, you're wanting to know how to your way around Cakewalk more. You're wanting to learn how to mix and master a song, have multi-tracks to add to your portfolio in the process. If you're wanting to know how compression works, how all of the inner workings of 
this DAW work, this is going to be a great course for you. Now, even if you don't use Cakewalk, it's still going to be a great course for you just simply due to the fact that it's jam-packed full of all kinds of useful tips, tricks, and knowledge, and you get those multi-tracks along with several cheat sheets, and there's PDF modules that go with every single one of the 10 modules that are included. In fact, today we're going to be having a giveaway of one of those 10 modules. Um, it won't be the actual video portion of that, but it will be the PDF portion of that. So, all right. Let me, um, internet's acting goofy over here. So I'm going to try to pull up this one more time. If it don't work, we'll move on. By the way, it looks like we have a about 17 viewers right now and 11 likes. If you haven't liked the video, now would be a great time to do so. And I don't ask just for um, clout or to appease my ego. I'm asking because every time we get a like, we get a share, we get a comment, it helps YouTube and that algorithm to realize and to notice like, hey, there's something going on over here that people like and are gravitating to. And so by you helping in that small way of, of just being a nice person, <laughs> it uh, is helping the channel as well without you having to pay a single cent. So. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the Facebook page because this one's not a working. And then I'm going to post this in the chat real quick for y'all. All right, there is the link in the chat for you to go in to check out that course. It has all of the ins and outs there. And then if you want the code for that, it is HSS or Home Studio Simplified Black Friday Sale. So HSS BFS is the code that you'll need to use at checkout. Now, a lot of people get confused about that. They're like, whoa, wait, it's wanting me to pay $97. When you get to the checkout and you use the, that code in that checkout area, it will reduce it down to the 35 and you won't be charged the full 97. Okay, enough of all that madness. Let's go ahead and uh, address a question here that came up, or rather a statement. Shan, who happens to be a newbie in the chat. Thank you, Shan, for hopping on. He says that Cakewalk is getting to the point that he can't open sessions or even play without slowing down, clicking, popping, or making some noise that's responsive, that resembles an angry tiger roar. Now, as has already been posted in the chat, um, thank you, DJ Big Red, for posting that video link as well. Um, this sounds like it could very well be a latency issue or it could be a driver issue. More than likely, though, it sounds like because there's clicking, popping, and it's slowing down, it sounds like you just need to adjust your latency settings. And that can be done. Let me just move my mug in this question here. That can be done up here in the corner when you go to edit. And let me zoom in on that. You go to preferences. And then you go over here to driver settings. You'll see right here you have a buffer size. You can take that up and it will reduce your latency. So if you're playing with um, some kind of a keyboard instrument or some kind of a MIDI instrument, it'll make that feel a little more realistic. It'll be more real time. Uh, there'll be less latency. However, uh, when you're mixing and mastering and recording things like that, it's sometimes is best just to move this somewhere towards the middle, the safer region. That will reduce a lot of those clicks and pops that you're experiencing, I guarantee it. Now, if it's, still happening after that and you know you've exhausted every attempt that you can then that actually sounds like it might be something else that very well could be something like uh, driver issues now one thing that i have noticed over all of the years that i've used cakewalk and i've used cakewalk now for over uh, 12 years maybe it's 15 i can't remember i've used it a long time uh, but in all of that I can definitely say that um, if you do not keep your PC updated and you do not keep Cakewalk updated, you're going to have issues. That's just nature of the beast, so to, so to speak. So, all right. Okay, so Jossie Music, he's a newbie. Good to have you here. Big crowd cheer for you, buddy. And, um, 
regardless of what DJ Big Red 81 said, I will not be singing a Michael Jackson song. <laughs> Mars, the second Genesis. I believe he's been here a couple times before. Uh, but let's go ahead and give him a crowd cheer anyway. Why not? Um, Robarth, the Melted Cheese Home Studio. Good to see you again, buddy. Wolfgang Productions. I believe it's. I believe you've been here before as well. Uh, Oren Piercy. Shan. See, I got you. Ba -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. Job. Job Clovers. Good to have you, buddy. And it's good to see some, some familiar faces in the chat as well. Mark George, Mob the Gamer. We got Ben Grower. Uh, just some awesome people. Ben says, hello, hello, hello. And um, let's see. DJ Big Red 81. Yeah, we've got some, we got some heavy hitters here in the chat. All right. So most of you have already either taken advantage of the Kickwalk course Black Friday sale or you're not too interested in it. That's fine. I, uh, I only made a quarter of a million dollars in the last three days. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> that would be sweet, though. Um, no, that would be awesome. Uh, but I have not. Even if I did, you guys would be the first to know because we would have some kind of, some sort of awesome giveaway or something here. So, all right. So with that being said, oh, you're very welcome. Glad I could answer your question. So Oren Piercy says he's new here. Thanks for having me on. Keep making those Michael Jackson vids. I am, buddy. Don't you worry. You can bet your biscuits. I'm going to start moving on to a few different bands. I'm going to start bringing in um, some Bee Gees is going to be the next one. And then I'm actually working on one with the Beatles right now, which is going to be very cool, especially given the fact that the Beatles movie just came out. have not checked it out yet. Definitely want to. Um, <laughs> it was at least a half a million. No, it was at least a half of 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 a half. Half of a half of a half. A half of a half of a million. <laughs> uh, could you tell me how to set up MIDI controllers in Cakewalk? I mean, each control. So, yeah, I have done a video on the channel where I talk about using uh, your MIDI controller as a Cakewalk surface control, I believe. Um, surface controller. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on there somewhere, to be honest. Uh, but with that being said, at the same time, uh, that's something that I would really have to kind of prepare more for. I would have to have my keyboard up here on the, the desk, so to speak, and be able to show you that um, that way. But there is definitely a way to do it. And if I could just explain it real quickly, uh, I know that you can't see my keyboard. Um, but basically, all you'd have to do is go up here to this ACT area. And then... Of course, right now it's telling me I have no control surface. So that's because my keyboard isn't actually plugged in. Um, da -da -da -da. You know, I don't know. Midnight Blue Movies, I'm not sure. That definitely does sound like uh, possibly a driver or even latency. I know with every update, there's always some kind of hiccups, and then they usually work them out later. So, But anyway, if I did have... Um, my MIDI controller plugged in, it would show up right here. And then I would just simply select it from this list. And um, then I would click add new control surface. And then from there, I would actually go in here and just physically map out the faders, the knobs, whatever they are to whatever I wanted them to be mapped out within Cakewalk. It seems like it's more complicated than what it really is, but it's really not that bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and start diving into this mix. I, To be honest, I don't know if we're going to get through this whole thing in one session like we do sometimes. I know sometimes we get we can bang out a, an entire mix in an hour and a half. Although it may not be completely finished, we at least get to a good point where everybody has learned something from it. So first things first, let's go ahead and select all of these channels. Let's make sure that we don't have anything we don't need on them. And because I used my Cakewalk Pro Start template, I know right out of the gate, we're good. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on all of the EQs because these are stinking awesome. And then I'm going to go ahead and right out of the gate, just turn on all the console emulation as well. 
Why? Because, I mean, why not? Console emulation. I mean, come on. Joe in 21.46 here in Holland. Ooh. Degrees? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Wow. Jossie Music, you're all over it, buddy. You are correct. In my personal and biased opinion, it is the best DAW on the market. I say biased because not only am I selling courses, but I'm also, as of a couple of months ago, I've become a BandLab insider. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing, apparently, um, because they still fail to answer my emails. But <laughs> we're doing our best around here, though. Which, by the way, if you guys were not um, aware, BandLab, IK Multimedia, and this channel are all working together to prepare some really cool stuff for you in the next few weeks. There's going to be giveaways, um, plug-in giveaways. There's going to be song competitions. There's going to be all kinds of really cool stuff happening. You're going to want to be involved in that. There is a playlist here on the channel now um, that will allow you to sort of know exactly what's going to be going on. So you're going to want to definitely stay subscribed to that playlist. The playlist is entitled, whoops, a studio without walls. As of right now, if you're in the chat, you're going to be the first to be privy to this because not a lot of people know about this as of yet. Here's the link to that. If you want to go ahead and subscribe, put a bookmark in your browser to that. Uh, that's going to keep you updated as videos drop in there. And um, you definitely are going to want to be involved though. All right, so let's take a first glance at what we got here. We've got all of our EQs are turned on. I'm going to go over here to the bus section. Let's make sure that all of these are on the up and up. Yep, console emulations turned on. EQs are turned on. And because this is a template, a pro start template, I've even got some EQ adjustments already being made here. Good deal. Robert Robarth, it was good to have you, buddy. <clears throat> Wolfgang Productions, that's good to hear. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do what I always do. Just going to start getting into the thick of all this. Uh, just right out of the gate, I want to kind of hear what we're working with with the faders at Unity. By Unity, I mean they're all at zero. Let's see what we got to work with here. Okay, so yeah, there's definitely some balancing issues as far as volumes, but that's fine. That's what the mixing process is for. So let's go ahead and start diving into that. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and start a giveaway. So for the next three minutes, if you enter in exclamation point freebie, all one word, lowercase, uh, that will actually get you entered into a drawing where you can win something free here on the channel today. Or at least I think. Has it started? Okay. It says it started, but I'm not seeing it pop up in the chat. So hopefully. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Vika V. Oh, cool. You've already fixed the problem. That's what I'm talking about. Andre, good to see you. Okay, so I don't see the, the giveaway popping up in the chat like it's supposed to. So I'm going to assume that it's not working properly. Ba, 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 da, da. No big deal. Um, well, I guess it is kind of a big deal if people want to get in the giveaway. <laughs> uh, 
Probably need to figure that out. Okay, let's see what's going on. Let's make sure that I'm signed into the right account here. You know, if this stuff didn't happen during a live event, then I would I would seriously wonder if there was some kind of time space compendium, something was was freaking out on us here because That's just how things normally roll anyway. Okay. Let's see here. Now. Okay, let's try again this way. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Adam, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm not seeing it pop up in the chat like it's supposed to. That's crazy. Let me, um, Let me make sure that all this is like as it should be. It might just be a simple thing of me having to make them a moderator again, even though they're already a moderator. We'll get it all sorted out here, folks, because I want to make sure I have provide as much value here as possible. And one way that we do that, other than just live mixing sessions and Q&A like we do here, is um, the ability to have freebies. And who doesn't like to give freebies away? Okay. All right, let's try this again. Start this giveaway. Boy, that's some good coffee. What kind of coffee are you all drinking? Still not showing up in the chat. What a bunch of madness. Hmm. Okay. Well... Let's try and sign out and then sign back in. Who knows? Maybe that'll work. Let me know by the way of the chat there what your favorite brand of coffee is. And if it's something that I've never heard of, I'd like to try it out. Current giveaway. Herbal tea, he says. Nice. Dark roast. Earl Grey. Still nothing in the chat. Hmm. I wonder if. Coffee and grains. <laughs> oh. Let's see here. I know there's a way to sign in, so to speak. To your stream elements. Maybe that's what it is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Okay, let's cancel that. Well, for whatever reason or another, it looks like the giveaways will not work. And so rather than keep you guys on here all day long and trying to get this to work uh, when it's obviously not wanting to. We see you, mob. We see you hanging out over there. Da, da, da. That's just weird. Like, normally this would be a seamless integration. I don't see it anywhere happening anywhere in here. You know what? I bet I know what I did. Let me see if that worked. Nope. Yeah, let's let's just mix. Okay, so we will still have giveaways. Um, we'll just do them a little bit differently. Maybe we'll do them using the Wheel of Awesomeness instead uh, because we all know how much we love the Wheel of Awesomeness. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, get into the thick of this. So you heard a little bit about what we had to start out with. Um, it wasn't necessarily a bad starting position. So we can um, at least be aware of the fact that we have we don't have, you know, junk tracks to work with or something like that. Nothing we have to do a, a bunch of fixing on. So we're going to go ahead down through here. Hello, hello. And we're going to start with, this is how I always will usually operate with the drums first. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and highlight all the drums right off the bat. Send them to a drums bus. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button. It takes a while for it to come in. Actually, I think I wanna fix that right out of the gate. So where does this come in at? Nothing like freshly brewed coffee, if that ain't the truth. And I think it's like right here. Or it could be right here. Okay. Select them all, split. And then let's just do a delete real quick. Select them all, drag them over. That didn't work. So what we'll do is select them all, split come up here to ripple edit delete all now whenever we delete boom they've all been moved over turn that back off so as not to get too crazy here all right now i'm going to bring these drums up here into the mix i've already sent them to a drums bus just going to start at like negative six on the fader Okay, now some of this might be kind of hard for you to hear at first. Uh, just bear with me here. Okay, I'm sending this to a parallel compression bus. The way that this works is I was to solo out. So essentially this parallel compression bus is basically it's just crushing transients. Okay. Um, with that being said, 
it's going to crush them, but then I'm going to implement them back into the mix. And I want to like really smash them too. Okay. So what you can hear there is it's going to be a lot of low end beefiness and then the transient of the snare, the smack of that snare is the only things that we're really wanting to get sort of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that. So I'm, gonna, I'm taking the fader all the way down now and I'm going to slowly blend it back in with the drums. Hey, VST sounds. Okay, so this parallel compression is for the drums. Um, and literally all I'm doing is mainly just affecting the kick and the snare and I'm blending that back in. So if I was to remove this parallel compression, this is what it sounds like. A little bit of a pause. I'll turn that up for you. Now I'm going to put the parallel compression back in. Without. And with. Okay. That's a good starting point for them drums. I don't necessarily have to get stuck in the weeds with them right now. I'm just mainly trying to get some levels. But I did want to go ahead and address that right off the bat just simply because... Uh, I knew that it was going to need to be done. So now let's get a good balance of these drums. I want that snare to be a little louder. A little bit more on the hi hats. And the toms, they should be, they should be pretty good right where they're at. Okay, now I'm gonna start bringing in this bass guitar. Oh, that's right. I had the have this soloed, so it's not going to let it hear. There we go. As you can see from the waveforms that we just looked at, these bass signals did not, they were not recorded very hot at all. So if you look at these normal bass tracks, they look more like this. <laughs> Um, but these were recorded much more conservative levels. Nothing wrong with that, um, but we can fix it. It's actually better sometimes to err on the side of, of caution. Uh, I want to hear what the bass pick sounds like first. Harrison Nelson, good to have you, buddy. Okay, so this is the low end of the bass here. It 
So I had to boost the gain on that by 18 dBs up here at the top just to get that where it was audible. So that's not, that's not natural. But furniture for Mocha Express is. So with that being said, um, that's a commercial, by the way, here in the States. Um, I say stuff sometimes and I'm like, I probably need to explain that because people just think I'm a weirdo. Which, by the way, you're not wrong. Okay, I'm going to throw a good old CA2A on this bad boy. Really crank it up. Throw it into limiter mode. Crank the gain up about 60. Let's see how that did. What's up, Code Red? Wow, that's crazy. I've never had to crank that up that much. This is real world application though. This is exactly the kind of stuff that you would run into in a real world application versus, you know, getting tracks from some well-recorded million dollar studio. Okay, so now I can work with that. Did I boost a, a plugin way beyond its boundaries of what you would normally do? Yeah, I did. Did it work? Yeah, it did. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to bring them drums back in. I want the, the bass pick part of that. I want that to be actually louder as that's going to be the attack. It's going to be the area of more interest where you're going to hear the bass more than just feel the bass. Now this low end, I still want in there, obviously, but as it stands right now, you're mainly just feeling that you're not really hearing it. Nice little mute button there. So I didn't blow your eardrums out. Okay, so now I, I feel like I got a pretty good balance between those two. I'm gonna select both tracks. I'm gonna create a group. And we'll set it to purple because that's what I like my bass at. Now, whenever I adjust one fader, it'll adjust both of them together. All right. Slowly start bringing some other stuff up here. Go ahead and jump. <laughs> jump. No, not hardly. Okay. like this should have been in the drums section. Evidently I missed that one. John Rosenblum, hey, from Alabama.
or just mainly just feeling it out, sort of uh, feeling it out by ear. Now, as a guitarist, I have a tendency to put these louder than what they need to be at first. Nice. Hey, thank you, Junkin Nichols, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to create a guitar bus. Call this guitars. That's where I'm going to send my guitars. Hey, Janos Kirily. I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks for subscribing. You're awesome. All right, let's go ahead and send this to the new bus that I just created. This will just help me to basically... Uh, adjust all of those after I get a good balance on them, adjust them all at once with some kind of plug-in or whatever it might be that I'll be putting on them. Okay. Well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. Okay. So yet again, we're still just going back. We're setting some levels right now so all we're doing is mainly just adjusting faders we're not adding tons of plugins or nothing like that i had to add some here to the base just to get it up to to par as far as volume levels uh, but now all we're literally doing is just balancing out faders It's got a surprising amount of punch. Okay, let me see if I've got these toms into a better place. Definitely like the toms. That sounded a lot better. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, we just got a super chat. You're probably asking, well, Robert, how did you know that? Well, because this room just lit up like a disco ball and I got disco lights all over my face. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg McKinney, for giving a super chat of $4.99. You're awesome. And now I'm going to proceed to turn this off before it blinds me <laughs> anymore. That's a new feature here on the channel, by the way, if you didn't know about that. Uh, anybody who sends a super chat lights the room up like a disco ball. And now, because of where I've got the light, effectively blinds the mix engineer. <laughs> okay, so I think, I mean, it's not golden. Um, but at the same time, we're getting there. Now, what you'll notice is I haven't actually adjusted the vocals yet. Now, this is one of those things where I usually, almost always... We'll save these vocals till the very end. I feel like it's sort of the most important instrument in the mix. And so whenever I do that, um, I usually adjust it at the very, very end of, of everything. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. When you talk this much, stuff happens. Okay, so I've got a lot of strings and synths that I think I want to throw them all into a bucket of strings and synths. Usually my strings and my synths are 
um, green. That's just the color coding that I've always gravitated to for whatever reason or another. I just see them as a very green, green color. Uh, by the way, uh, it looks like if everything goes well, I have a date night set up with my wife. And we are going to check out the Columbus Philharmonic Orchestra. If you guys have never been to see an orchestra live, you are missing out. It is amazing to see all of those instruments playing together, all of them feeding off of one another's energy. Oh man, it's just, it's a good time. Okay, so I'm going to leave my reverbs alone for now. And I'm definitely going to be creating one for vocals as well. And I'm just going to leave it blue. Bring it up here next to the drums. And the drums, I'm going to go ahead and color them a little differently. Just to differentiate. There we go. The money green. <laughs> Okay, question of the day from Stan here. Stan has the question of the day. He says, which stereo imager do you use? I try not to, Stan, or Shan, sorry. Um, and the reason for that is it actually destroys your low end. So, yeah, it can. I should say it can destroy your low end, depending on where you put it. Um, yeah. Question of the day right there, though. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to start making some adjustments now um, to this mix as a whole. Now, here's one thing that I want to let you know, too. Um, whenever you use buses like this and you're sending entire groups of instruments, which I still have yet to send all these money strings, as they've been already denoted. Um, when you send these all to a bus, now instead of slapping 50 instruments, or, or plugins on 50 different tracks, I can literally just work with this one bus. Man, you talk about major time saving. So, all right, so they changed this money green because they are now on this bus. So I can control this, all of the strings at once, the volumes of those anyway, and even their, um, their, you know, their timbre, their timber whatever that's called. Juan's laughing at me in the chat right now. I've always had a hard time with that word. Timber, timber. Looks like there's some others I need to add on to that. Okay, now I should be able to control them all. Perky <laughs> A cuff hit the nail on the head right there. <laughs> okay. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start shaping. It sounds like to me, and this is what you want to do whenever you approach a mix. So this is just going to be straight out of the gate, some good practical teaching for you. So one of the first things you want to do when you approach a mix is you want to ask yourself, like, what are the main instruments that need to be featured in this mix? This one actually sounds very synth driven, almost very string driven. However, it does still have that driving element of the bass and the kick and the drums. The good part about that is all the fundamental frequencies of the kick, the bass, the drums are not going to conflict that much with the fundamental frequencies of the strings, which are the, the star of the show. So what you have right here is already a good setup for a, a good uh, arrangement because this is going to allow everything to be heard very well, just simply due to the fact that this is one of those, you know, nothing's going to be combating that much. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much in the chat. I'm blushing over here. Oh, dear. I'm blushing. That was weird. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and check out uh, exactly what I was talking about. So um, I'm going to start adjusting this, the high end, 
and I want these strings really to pop, to sound lush, to sound open and, and free because I feel like that's one of the things that's really going to help this mix to, to translate well. So first thing right off the bat, I'm going to start adjusting the EQ of this. As much as I like the low end, it doesn't necessarily all have to be there, and that will help to free up room for the bass. Now normally I would cut 500 uh, kilohertz or 500 hertz, uh, but it actually sounds really good right here on these synths. I'll turn this into a shelf. Okay. So this is before, this is after. And as you can see, that 500 hertz that I just added back into the mix there really helped to sell those strings, make them sound more like the strings that they need to sound. So. Let's take a listen again. So this is without and with. Nice. Okay. Uh, now the next thing I'm going to add into these strings to really get them to pop is some saturation. Now I do have a saturation bus here. And it looks like I don't really have a saturation plugin on it. So that's, that's fine. We can fix that. We're going to go to saturation. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know what? I don't like any of those, at least not right now, not for this. So I'm going to go to sort by manufacturer because there's one I'm already got my eyes on. Mm -hmm. Nope. No. Maybe. Yeah, here it is. No, I'm not going to use that one. Let's use the saturation knob. I like this one. Now, this is also in the Pro Channel. So, I don't necessarily have to use it here. I could actually use it in the Pro Channel, but for some reason or another, um, I just like the way this looks better. <laughs> so, I'm going to go to uh, Keep High, or rather Keep Low. What this is going to do is it's not going to saturate the low end as much as it is the high end information. I'm going to slowly start blending this into the mix. First, I got to send these to that. There we go. It's not really, it's not really driving that much into it. Now listen to how it opens the strings up and now keep in mind it is adding a little bit of a volume uh, gain there, but keep in mind too, 
listen to the soundscape of the strings themselves. So this is without us bringing in. Okay, so that's got to a little bit of a better place there. Let's go ahead and start, uh, let's work on this bass a little bit more. I wanna really shape its tone now. Batman. Okay, that already sounds a lot, a lot cleaner. Start working on these drums. Let this snare to crack some more. And I am going to work on the individual snare itself. this kick. Okay, got some 400. Getting to a better place now. That one there was just a little bit loud.
Okay, so now the synths are starting to kind of overpower a little. Uh, start adjusting with some painting here. I should open up the middle even more. Starting to get them opened up a little more. Thank you, Brandon Gotch, for subscribing. Appreciate that. Now, go ahead and what I want to do is I want to take 400 hertz. And I want to dip just a little bit out of each one of these tracks. And the reason for that is I want that information to be inhabited by the guitars when they come in, as well as uh, some of that low end from the bass and the drums. These strings don't necessarily need it because I've already boosted 500 in the other, uh, in the bus. So what this is going to do is sort of count, be like a uh, complementary EQ. Immediately you hear that bass open up. Beautiful. Okay. So now I'm going to come to where these guitars are at and I'm going to go ahead and loop this section because I want to get these guitars nailed. They only come in for a short amount of time, but um, call me crazy, but I love guitars. And I feel like they also come in at just the right time to really be the star of the show at that given time. So.
Okay. I brought them forward just a little bit, but not quite where they're not at the place I'd like for them to be. There's a little bit of low end information. I believe it's around 300 hertz that I want to take out. And then I'm going to also go ahead and I'm going to, I got it. I might as well play with it, man. This has got to be one of the coolest. Got to be one of the coolest little plugins I've been messing around with here lately. And this is basically like an entire guitarist's um, pedal board at your feet. So I am going to take off the majority of all of this, though. I just want to get some certain effects here. Uh, I'm going to use the built-in EQ with this, and I'm also going to try and use um, a little bit of modulation just to see if I can get it to sound a little differently. Every little slight bit of chorus on there, I think, is going to really set that over the edge. Okay, here we go again. I'm not even going to touch that anymore. I like it. Beautiful. So this was before. Didn't sound bad at all. Throw this bad boy on there. 3D. Awesome. And at that point in time, You'll notice that I went ahead and boosted the 6,000 to 7,000, somewhere up up above that major region there. Uh, yeah, seven, 7,400 kilohertz, boosted that up to 6 dBs. Now, that seems like a bunch, yes, but at that time, it's coming in over the top of the synths. So it's, got a, it's combating with a lot of high-end information already. Uh, so that just gives it that extra little push, that oomph that it needed. Um, the next thing I'm going to start working on is adding... The implementation here of some reverbs because as you can see it definitely opened up the guitars uh, tremendously um, so let's go ahead and check out and see what we can't accomplish with some reverb in this mix and i'm going to use my old trusty stereo room reverb i love this reverb by the way okay i'm going to put that on all three of my reverb buses that would be short room, medium plate, and long haul. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is, 
Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Sehan, um, that name. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give up on that. That's not going to work. 25 viewers, 32 likes. How does that happen? You guys are awesome. You guys are liking more than once. How do you even do that? Okay. Uh, but, 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 I'm getting lost in the weeds here. Hold on. I'm coming back around. No, not Home Depot. This isn't sponsored. There we go. Let's bring up the old website here. And we're going to go to our reverb and delay calculator. I'm going to type in 72 beats per minute. That's at least what he told me it was. 833.33 is my average note duration for a quarter note. So now with that being said, I'm going to bring this up. So about four something should be half of that. Four twelve. That sounds good. Set this to all the way wet. Put it all the way in the mix. Um, but um, bum bum. Yep. Take that down. Take that down. Okay. You know what? Actually, now that I've adjusted that first one, as far as those other settings. I'll just copy and paste this one over here and adjust the times. Okay. So the average quarter note duration was 833. Just type that in there. 30 seconds. What? Wait, what? What? 833. Oh, I guess I got to put point 833. Hello. Okay. And then it would be what? 1660 something. So. 1.6. All right, there's my short, medium, and long reverbs. Let's start with the drums first because I feel like they would benefit the most, and I'm also going to be building around them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in here. Ah. All right, here we go. Let's send them to the short room first see what we can get and i am gonna solo them out <gasps> you're gonna solo something and listen to it while you're mixing everybody does things differently <laughs> if it works for you do it okay that's with without with All right, we got that little bit of a smack there going on. Send it to the medium. So one thing I have noticed with Cakewalk is if you send something to a reverb mid-swing, like while it's playing, it will almost always sound out of time. You have to stop it, restart it. Oh yeah, that sounded like it's in the space already. All right, let's send it to a long haul. We're in this for the long haul, folks. Bring those down just a tad. That sounds a whole lot better. You know, uh, normally alter alter normally i do mix in mono that's actually a part of my 15 step mixing process and i have not even done it as of to this point i did check the mix earlier in mono but i'm moving along with such speed that i haven't really even followed my own steps so
Okay, so we've checked the mix and mono. Sounds good. Okay, um, yes, I've actually already used some presets, Mark George. I know. <gasps> you you use presets? <laughs> you, you can't use presets because Chris Lord Algae doesn't use presets. He just creates them. <laughs> okay, anyway. That'll be enough of that shenanigans. All right, quit laughing. Okay, got hey. Okay, it wasn't that funny. Are you guys still laughing? Okay. It's always the girl in the back. What are you doing back there? All right, anyway. All right, so let's go ahead. <laughs> Anybody else notice how crazy it gets around here? All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete this bus here. Mob the Gamer brings up a good point, though. He, he has picked out something here. Uh, that kick needs some more oomph. Some more oomph. And I'm going to do it right on the kick track instead of on the drums bus. That would make the most sense. And what I'm going to do to get that thing, thing some oomph which, by the way, this is a free plug-in if you'd like to go and check it out. It used to be included with Kickwalk by uh, Kickwalk Sonar. Uh, whenever Kickwalk by BandLab bought it out, then, you know, stuff went away. But these are free. You can go and download them. You can actually still put them into your pro channel as well. So I'm going to set my frequency first. I want it to be 60, 65 hertz. And here's another quick tip, by the way, for those of you using Kickwalk. If you're trying to get to a specific number and you don't want to type it in or you can't type it in, whenever you try to move there with this normal knob, it's going to be really hard. But if you hold the shift button, it actually slows the knob down so that you can get right to that number that you want. Boom. You have just been upgraded. That really wasn't a very manly sound. But anyway, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to bring my amplitude, amplitude all the way down and we'll slowly start introducing that kick beefiness. There it is. Yeah, those those toms are man they're needing some help especially during that little fill right there that fill it should be sounding a whole lot better a whole lot better 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 all right let's um shift l will loop that section so that we can just keep kind of working with those They're missing some high end, honestly. More than the low end. Right, let's check it out. There we go.
nice. And this middle toms. Not bad. I think I know what's going to help those toms, though. More than anything, um, I think there's going to be some some spiffage. Look, here I go using... Are you serious? Am I using presets again? What is my problem? Why do I keep doing this? that over. Copy, copy. Definitely didn't sound good on the uh, <laughs> these smaller toms here. Sounded good on the other ones, though. just doesn't sound right. There's something horribly missing from this. A little bark a dog. That's better. Getting there. Okay, so as much as I'm liking that beefiness of that kick. Um, I also feel like it's almost too beefy now, as far as like low end flabbiness. So I'm going to bring that high pass up to about 56. There we go. Okay, let's take that loop off. All right. Ba -da -da -da. What's going on over here? The flange sound from Jimi Hendrix, Axis, Bold as Love. Nice. Matamusi. Hey, I appreciate that. Here's the thing. Um, I'll go ahead and bring that up on the screen. That's fine. So all this is subjective. And to be very honest with you, Matamusi, um, you can only do so much during a live stream to make things sound as good as they possibly can. You have to also take into account the fact that whatever I'm hearing is not going to be necessarily everything that you're hearing as you are hearing it colored by YouTube's algorithm and the, uh, the sound that you're listening at. With that being said, I have been doing this professionally for years, and I have also heard on several occasions um, from several different people, my mixes sound great. I've heard from other people that they sound bad. I know going forward with my career as a mix engineer, as a mastering engineer, that I am going to hear comments just like yours. And so I humbly accept your opinion, 
but I definitely will have to let my work speak for itself. Okay. All right. With that being said, we'll go ahead and move on. Now, I appreciate you guys, by the way, in the chat, sort of wanting to, you know, stick up for me and whatnot, but don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So there's been some mixes before that, you know, I've heard too that I was like, wow, that doesn't sound that great, but it's made platinum records. So can't be doing something, can't be doing anything too wrong with it. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's go back to the beginning. Let's see where we started. That'd probably be a good, good point, too. So this is where we started. I actually like the kick then. I don't know how to do now. But that's before all the tinkering of things. And this is after. Nice. I'm going to turn the reverb down a little bit on that guitar, though. That was kind of ear opening to hear that without. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Size. Oh, yeah, I forgot it has this ducking feature. Super cool. And I'm going to turn that down just a tad bit. Okay, let's try that. For the guitar, anyway. Much better. Not quite so buried in there. Thanks for bringing that up, Mad Moosey. Hmm. No, Madam Moosey. Uh, Madam, Madam Hussey. Mad, Madam, Madam Hussey. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say your name. Um, I was not offended at all. I was just simply stating that we're all entitled to our own opinion. I don't get offended at comments like that anymore. I used to, um, but no, your opinion is, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and as far as do we all know each other, are we all family here? This is sort of like a family. Yeah, we all come together once a week and we hang out, we enjoy music and we enjoy just generally hanging out with one another. So are we a family of blood? No, but anywho, yeah, I'm not offended in the least bit. Okay, so here we go. Okay, I'm going to go up here at 65 hertz, do a little quick boost on that, on the drum bus itself now. Okay, so that definitely helped that kick drum to come into play even more. All right, and here we go. Okay, just checking the chat real quick to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Get back into the thick of this. So what I've done is I've uh, essentially just beefed up the entire drums bus just by adding that 65 hertz. That won't affect too much else in that um, drums bus. And I think also to further 
round things off, I'm going to add some tape saturation. I'm going to put that before the console emulation. There we go. Before. And after. Very subtle, but it does the trick. Makes me wonder if the way that I'm hearing those toms, it makes me wonder if they're not, if there's not a phase issues going on with those toms, because they almost sound like they're, I'm going to check real quick. That could be the solving of all the problems with these toms. Because it sounds like I don't really hear the issue until the next tom hit comes in. Oh, those are in, those are in phase. Interesting. Let me try a little bit of painting. I normally would paint these anyway, so why not? <laughs> it's fine, Madam Moosey. We've had worse comments than that come in here. It's fine. No harm, no foul, buddy. See, they sound okay in and of themselves. But it's right there that they fall apart. Which makes me wonder... Let me just try it. I'll invert the phase on one of these. Let's hear that in context with the mix. Nope, that was worse. All right, I'm going to pull out one of the old, uh, one of the old tricks here. The old transient shaper out. You can't go wrong with that. And what I want to do here is da -da -da -da, adjust the weight. Hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. Much better. Let's uh, do that some more there. Yep, that was definitely that was definitely working. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down and even copy it up. Let's get them all beefy. Much better. Still not exactly where I'd like for it to be, but I'm also not going to get stuck in the weeds here. Much better. Okay. One more time. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to move on by adding some reverb to this here. Little Phil Collins. Nice. Okay, so we're going to put some reverb on the synths and the strings. Help them to blend in a little better. Okay. Nice. 
Nice. All right, let's see how that affected things. Yes, this is the November Song Contest winner. Okay, so I'm hearing low-end beefiness. I'm hearing some punch. Thank you, Essie or, or Raka. I, why do I keep getting these names I can't say? Thank you so much for subscribing. SA. Um, with that being said, uh, we got some low-end beef. We've got some high-end articulation. We've got some goodness in the mids. I think we're ready to go ahead and start moving on to uh, bringing in these vocals. And this is where it's going to get crazy because, as you can see, we've got quite a few vocal tracks here. And with this being the star of the show, we want to make sure we get these right. So, oops. Did I never create the vocals bus? Oh, I think I did, but I didn't name it vocals. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. No problem. We'll come in here and insert the stereo bish. We'll call it Vox because we're crazy and we like to, we like to uh, abbreviate for brevity's sake. All right, turn that on, turn that on. I'm going to right out of the gate, put a high pass filter on at 70. And right out of the gate, I'm going to go to this 317, just dip out a little. Okay. But, uh, all right, let's start bringing up these Vox. And first, we got to find out where they're at. There they are. Let's, uh, let's jump straight into the thick of it. With this section right here, this should have everything that we need. We'll just loop it. Ta -da, ta -da. Okay. Go ahead and select all these vocals. Hit play. Nice. Okay, so one thing I'm picking up on, one thing I'm picking up on immediately is these are not actual lead vocals. These are backgrounds. So I'm going to call this one BG Vox, and we are going to treat that differently. I always treat my background vocals differently than I do my foreground vocals with good reason. Da, 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 da. All right.
and every mercy, full and free. A sovereign God, I wish to sing. Okay, so these are labeled as lead vocals, so we're going to go ahead and put them into that to category. It was around a thousand, I think. In every mercy, full and free. There we go. Took out the nasally region there. Nothing wrong with that. We all got it. So now we got the background box being added in. A sovereign God, I wish to see. I go to 3,000 kilohertz. Grace, Dip it out. Grace has reigned. In every blessing, he So I'm going to change the painting here. See how grace, free grace has Want the background box to be painted hard left and hard right. In every blessing, he ordained. In every mercy, full and free. I don't know, actually, it sounds kind of good with them all. To see how grace, free grace has reigned in every blessing. Kind of sounds good just like that. It is really beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's bring that in context with the rest of the mix. In every mercy. In every blessing. 
Yes, a lot of stock to plugins see here. How grace, free grace has in every blessing he Um, that's a good question. Um, Mark, uh, I typically don't use it at all. I actually try to do my best to mix without using compression because, um, although you can achieve good results with compression, in fact, I use it very liberally on bass guitar, kick drum, stuff like that. I feel like at the same time, if there's not a specific reason why I'm reaching for it, then I don't want to just reach for it because I feel like, oh, every track has to have a compressor on it. So while some tracks in this will definitely benefit for some, from some compression, I feel like there's um, the issues there are not so much so that the dynamics require me to use that. And if you've watched any of my, my mix togethers, I really don't use a whole lot of compression at all. Okay, now let's get these to nestle into the mix with some reverb. Okay, like I said, when you're adding reverbs in the middle of something playing, you definitely want to check it out because it doesn't always come out right. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this now with the reverbs in place. So that's definitely helping it to nestle in there a little better. Now, right off the bat, though, what you heard is, oops, I sent that to the wrong thing. Right off the bat, what you heard was the volume spike, and that's just because I'm sending it to a bus that already has the volume at unity. So I just have to adjust my send levels to get something where it sounds good to me. Okay. And I'm going to do the same, sort of similar here. I don't get too stuck on if is it the exact number, so. So that's good to know. We're back at this point.
Awesome. Okay, so uh, sort of revisit the um, compression thing. So compression literally can be used as a tool to shape tone. And what, what I mean by that is, like, let's say you have a transient of a snare, for instance. The snare comes out, it's got a crack. And then there's a tail of that crack that goes out. That didn't sound good. But anyway, uh, by using compression, which literally all a compressor is doing is turning down loud parts and turning up quiet parts. If I set that compression setting to such a setting to where I want that crack to be accentuated, but that tail to go away, then I'm going to set my attack to be less than the time that the crack comes through, but clamp down when the tail comes out. So all I get is the crack and the tail's gone. If I set that conversely in the other direction, now I can tame that transient of the crack of the snare and bring up, based off of my settings, my release settings, bring up the tail end of that snare. So now I can get the reverb or the room sound of that snare so literally it's mainly just for turning up and turning down things so what i'm trying to do with my mixes is get such a good balance that i can just use automation to do what a compressor would do and for those tracks where i feel like they're a little bit too dynamic like in this case the vocals were a little bit too dynamic you notice that whenever it went to just the lead vocal um where it was only the lead vocal singing the volume dropped dramatically. And then when all of the vocals were singing, even the lead vocal itself went up because it was probably in the heat of the moment. When you're singing with a choir, you sing louder than you normally would. So with that being said, <laughs> I was hoping somebody wouldn't point out the butt cracks, but he did it. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so what I'm doing here with the CA2A, because it's a very transparent limiter, is I'm literally using a limiter to just level everything out. So my loud parts are now quiet, my quiet parts are now loud to the point where everything is just right down the, the center of where it needs to be. And you can do that with a transparent limiter like I'm using without killing the transients, without crushing or destroying things. And that's where, you know, I don't really like using um, this inbuilt. Um, where is it? See, I can't even find it. Uh, like in this instance, this would be a, a bus. So here's my bus compressor. I can, I can use it. Don't get me wrong. I can get good results with it, but I don't really need to if I'm, I'm going to reach for something that I already know that works. So, and that's part of the thing about, you know, yet again, it's all subjective. Some people would prefer to use a compressor on the bus like that. That's fine. Whatever works for you. All right. I'm going to take this all the way back to the beginning. Just going to kind of see where we are. Because we've already been streaming now for a long time. Two hours. trail off there that's a dotted eighth uh delay there so someone had brought up a really good um ba -da -ba -ba. here it is so andre good point here he brings up a delay effect with ducking would be nice on the box now typically speaking 
that is the effect that I would like to go for. And I actually have a plugin that does a really good job at that uh, from Softube. I don't know why I'm trying to bring it up in the pro channel, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's called the tube delay or no, the dynamic delay from Isotope. And what it does is it literally takes the, um, takes the delay down while the vocal is singing and then brings it up much like a side chain effect would be like your, what you're talking about, a ducking delay. It essentially does that and it does a good job of it. However, uh, there are certain instances like where this right here, this song has um, a lot of long phrases. To every blessing, full and free. With that long drawn out, you're not going to notice those reverbs until they stop singing anyway. So the other times where it might sound like it's starting to step on it, it, it by the time it starts to sound that way, there's already a long phrase that comes out that covers that up. So I don't think it really needs a ducking delay in this one. In fact, I think it actually adds to the vibe of the song because it sounds sort of 80s already. And 80s were slathered in reverb and delays. So that's when they first started noticing how to use them. And so then they were like, hey, let's use the tar out of these things. All right, back into it. saturation on these vocals. I'm going to saturate the low end mainly. Guitars. You know what's happening. 
You know what's coming, folks. The one. One compressor to rule them all. I just realized I had the input there cranked up. Sorry about that. So, Herky Acuff, if you cannot find the CA2A in your cakewalk, you'll need to go into your, as a train goes by, you'll need to go into your um, utilities menu, go to the cakewalk plugin manager. It should look much like this. And then whenever you go to scan your VST plugins, make sure that you have show excluded right here. And that's blocking it. There it is. Show excluded. I just realized I still had that comment up on the screen. Sorry about that. Blocking everything. Hey, Midnight Blue. It's good to have you, buddy. Sorry I haven't been able to interact with everybody in the chat as much as I would like to. Uh, I've been into the, the weeds here. All right, so I'm going to turn all this down and slowly start adding in what sounds good to me.
Okay, so the only thing that I felt was really kind of poking out in that just quick, brief uh, listen through there was the fact that the uh, the strings just seem to be poking out in a few places more than what I'd like for them to. Uh, the vocals could probably use some automation just to get them up to speed, and I will probably more than likely do all that uh, after the fact. This mix isn't finished, but it's definitely got a lot farther than whenever we uh, started out. So let's listen to what we started out with. We're going to remove all the effects. Okay, and let's bring in all of the changes that we've made now in the last two and a half hours, and let's see what's happened. down a little bit now. Other things been kind of tamed. We've come a long way, baby. We are uh, not completely there yet. Like I said, I would definitely be doing some automation on this just to make sure that there's some areas that need adjusted. And then, of course, part of my 15-step mixing process, the end of that is to literally... Um, where's it at? The end of that is literally to listen to the song without touching anything. Like, you don't touch nothing. And then... Here's my calibration profile. So now I'm going to listen back to it through sound reference ID. What this is going to do is this is going to allow me to hear what it would sound like in the car, allow me to hear what it might sound like in a different setting. It's also going to take the coloration of my headphones out of, out of the mix, literally and allow me to hear this as it should be heard. So this is the best way to really listen to a final mix is through this plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that now. Let's make sure that I'm... That's not what I wanted.
Thank you, DJ Big Red eighty one. Uh, this meager mix that I've worked on, uh, I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, where is it? Sound control panel. There it is. Finally, because I have to remember that I got to go in here and enable it. There we go. Okay, so this purple line is the EQ curve of the headphones that I'm cur currently using. These are the Audio Technica ATH 8500Xs. Do they make those names any longer? <laughs> and this is what they will sound like after the simulation of the plugin from the Sound Reference ID. So essentially, it's going to be the flattest sounding representation that I can get. So I'm going to play this through that. Uh, let's make sure that the mix is going through that and not through the actual speakers themselves. Da -da -da -da. Sound reference. There we go. Now this is going to sound way different from what we just heard. And that's the purpose of it. Hey, thanks, Dwayne Nicholson. Appreciate you subscribing, buddy. So this is going to sound completely different from what we've actually just heard. But that's the point. We want to hear the uncolored mix as it's going through something that is especially the Michael Jackson stuff, especially after um, the headphone calibration is taken into account. Okay. Okay. When his dear sons should mercy from everlasting he decreed. There it is. Now I'm going to try to listen to this in a car. Don't sound too bad, actually. Let's listen to it in a mid-level sedan. This is typically what my car sounds like. Very over-accentuated, low-end. SUV. Through which his sovereign love should run. And every face okay, so disabled. Let's hear some on some Apple AirPods. don't sound too bad. I'm pretty impressed. Of course, it helps that I know my headphones very well. This is what it will sound like on an average in-ear headphone. Laptop. Here on some mixed cubes. And we're here on some NS elevens. That actually sounds really good.
And we'll go back to... This is what you would hear on headphones. That actually sounds really good. I'm pretty impressed. Not just impressed with the software and what it's doing right now, uh, but I'm actually impressed with my own mix, believe it or not. <laughs> um, yes, this is called Sonarworks. So if you guys are not familiar with this, um, I'm not necessarily an affiliate, but they did send me uh, for free the Sonarworks calibration software that we just looked at so that I could review it. And in the process of me reviewing this, I tried it once before, like several years back, and I was like, ooh, I don't like it. It's making things sound weird. Then I went back and revisited because I had a gentleman here on the channel that I just interviewed recently, um, David Glenn, and he was like, oh, dude, no, you've got to try it again. So with that being said, um, I, I reached out to him and said, okay, Glenn, he wants me to try this again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, all right, David, I'm going to try it again. Boom. Loved it. Then they sent me the uh, calibration microphone so that I could actually calibrate my studio monitors as well as the room that I'm in. Game changer. I'm telling you guys, game changer. If you guys want to get your hands on it, I do believe that they still have a Black Friday sale too. Let them know that Robert sent you from the Home Studio Simplified channel. And I, they might even, don't quote me on this, but they might even give you a, um, da -da -da -da, a discount. So, I mean, you could always ask. The worst they could say is, oh, sorry. No. Uh, sonar works. Let me make sure that uh, they might still be on a Black Friday sale right now. They also have package deals. Actually, let me just show you the website. So they have some package deals here where you can actually get headphones that are already pre-bundled, that have the, they're already pre-calibrated for whatever it is. Um, also, they'll send you, in this particular instance, you get the Sennheiser HD650s with the calibration microphone so that if you have um, studio reference monitors that you're using as well, it will help to basically take your room, your horrible sounding room, out of the equation. So it not only calibrates your room, but it calibrates your monitors in context with your room. So you set your monitors to a good listening level, usually typically negative 85 dBs, and then... Um, you put this microphone in the room and like I've shown on here on my channel before, you go through a series of, of setups and oops, I was going to see if there's any deals on that before I clicked away. So da -da -da -da, for speakers and headphones. Yeah. So there's always a free trial as well. 15 day free trial. I believe it is uh, completely, completely free. Nothing is inhibited. There's no crazy weird pops, clicks, nothing stupid like that. Um, so it looks like I'm not seeing the, the deals, but I'm almost positive they had some. Unless they're gone. But anyway, if you use uh, headphones predominantly, you can get that. I thought there would be a, a sale going on, and there there still might be a sale uh, if you're going through Sound uh, Sound Water Sweetwater. So you can get the headphone calibration for ninety nine dollars, and I'm telling you, it is a game changer. Um, and then you can get the speaker and the headphones for two forty nine. If you want to include the measurement microphone, throw in an extra fifty bucks for two ninety nine, and now you have the whole package. But I'm telling you, it's either spend two ninety nine on this this whole package here and be able to get mixes that translate without having to run out to your car 50 times or spend thousands of dollars treating the room that you're in and then still have to go out and test it out in the car. Yeah, it's a game changer. Thank you so much, by the way, David Glenn of the Mix Academy for hooking me up with that knowledge and saying, hey, you need to go retry them, giving me that extra little oomph. So I appreciate that. It's always good to have friends like that that are in the same space that are helping you um, by pushing you to be a better mix engineer. All right, so let's um, somewhere on here. I just recently did, yeah, a mix that translates anywhere. So if we go and we check this out, I'm going to watch my own ad so I'll get paid here. Rarely ever does a product cross my path. Oh, yeah, they really sent me a cool shirt too, by the way. Flat is the new black. Um, 
But here at the end, this is what the calibration process looks like. So it's super cool. And at first I was like, how does this thing know where I'm putting the microphone in the room? And then I realized, oh, it's through sound. It's like echolocation. It's very cool. So you put the microphone in your listening position, then you stick it up to the mo to the, the monitors that you're using. Left speaker, done. And then it will calibrate the speakers in context with the microphone. Then you put it in your mix position, it, con it takes it in context with where you're setting. Right speaker, done. And then it starts, you have to like move it around the room like 50 billion times, and it takes a calibration of all of everything. Very cool. Now, see, it's want, want me to do this like 36 times. It does take a while. It, it took about 15 to 20 minutes. But man, it was worth it. And this is literally me moving it all around the room where it's telling me to. It's like a video game. And I evidently I won. <laughs> then, after you get your uh, speaker frequency response curve, you can save it as whatever your speakers are. And that will always be there. So if you ever want to pull that back up again, now I've got my speaker calibration. At any time, I can pull that back up again and say, oh, okay, here's my M-Audio BX5As. Boom. Now I've got a completely flat response in the room that I'm in. Dreamy gear shots. Who doesn't love them? Let's check these out. Yes, that's exactly what it does, alter, alter. This is turned into a Sonar Works commercial. <laughs> Yeah, so um, good point, Servant My Jesus. IK Multimedia does make a similar product. I have not tried it out yet, so I can't necessarily say which one is better than the other. Uh, but what I can definitely say is this one, it definitely works. So um, also the Slate VSX, yes. Um, for 600 bucks or save 300 bucks and get the SonarWorks package. Good, good point. Yep. And if those headphones break, that's it. With this here, I can recalibrate my room at any time and recalibrate another set of headphones or buy a, a calibration profile. So very cool, very cool. All right, guys, well, I hope that you've got something out of today's show. Let's go ahead and open it up real quick for some shout outs. These are individuals who have recently subscribed or we got Greg McKinney down here who's actually given me a super chat today. So thank you so much for that. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Ironwood Music says you better get sponsored for that. Uh, technically, I did. They sent me the plug-in and they sent me the microphone as well as that cool shirt because they believe in their product enough they wanted to send it over, um, which is, in my opinion, that's what a good company should do. If you have a good product and you believe in it well enough, you send it to someone to test out free of charge without them having any strings attached or giving them some kind of a payment in return, and then you get a real... Um, unbiased opinion and i told them whenever they sent it over i'm gonna i'm gonna tell people what i think about it and they said yeah that's fine so whenever they trust in their product that much that they're willing to go ahead and send it over knowing that i'm going to give the most honest review possible then yeah i kudos to them not to mention uh katrina who sent it over is a gem of an individual she is she's awesome and uh, you can go and check her out on instagram uh katrina I can't, I can't find it right now. But anyway, um, last but not least, before we go, we got to do one more thing. 
That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to spin the wheel of awesomeness. We're going to spin the wheel, whatever it lands on, that's what we're going to do. Here we go, tutorial request. So, by way of the comment section of this video, not the chat, because it will get lost in the chat if, you're, if you drop it in right here. When the video ends, though, there is a, and I think you can even do it now, uh, below the video, there's a comment section. Leave your tutorial video request, something you'd like to see me cover, in the comment section. That way I will see it, I'll come back and revisit that and go, okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Or if it's something that I feel like I can't do at this moment, I'll keep it in the hat and I'll use that later. So until next time, guys, remember, we can dream alone. We can even create alone. But together, we can achieve so much more. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, everybody, 